Hello, everybody. Welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I'm your host, Tom Burrett. It is great to be back for episode three. What a perfect opportunity uh, for today's axiom. That was it. You just saw it. The New York Times, Sunday, June 29th, 2008, featured a full-length article discussing really whether the marimba has reached a level yet as a significant solo performing instrument. And so big ups to Nancy Zeltzman. I'm going to investigate this further, find out how this happened. I suspect it had mostly to do with uh, ZMF starting, uh, Zeltzman Music Festival starting up here in just a few days in L.A. this year. Um, we'll talk more about that throughout this year. Um, but what an amazing time to be a marimbas right now, huh? If you're passionate about the marimba, you've seen it come so far in so little time. And really, uh, this happens in so many different ways. Every effort is good. But I want to highlight one, and I think that really helped make this happen. I suspect, and I will confirm this soon, but I suspect this level of exposure to one of the great worlds, one of the world's greatest newspapers, really probably came from a relationship between a marimbist and a uh, great composer of today. And that great composer, I suspect, was Stephen Mackey, who has a great uh, quote here at the beginning uh, that proves a lot. The marimba is coming of age right now, and you can't throw a dead cat without hitting a marimba concert. So, obviously, he thinks that there are so many marimba events out there and concerts and that we're just saturating. Um, there's so many more people playing, and that's obviously a huge part. But you know what? The other part, and today's axiom really is mostly this, that it's the, it's the composer-performer um, relationship that is so critical. Not just any composer, but composers like Stephen Mackey, uh, Louis Andreessen. Uh, Gunther Schuller has a, a lot to say in this article about the marimba, and that is what is going to make people listen, people outside of the little percussion slash marimba world. That's important for a lot of different things, but uh, if we're ever going to gain acceptance outside of that, um, this type of exposure is absolutely critical. So this is an amazing day. I think this is going to be somewhat a historic event. Whether or not it'll be marked specifically as you know tied back to this article i just think the number of eyes that are going to roll across that story is just absolutely phenomenal so huge ups to nancy zelsman and uh, bill mersh who was also cited in the article um and even to uh adam swinsky of so who had something to say towards the end there in the article so i will link up the article at the end of the show um if you go to the to my website you'll see it there um i'll also um uh, link up Nancy Zeltzman's site and ZMF site. She's got an amazing thing happening with Zeltzman, Zeltzman New Music. And so today's axiom is exactly that. What are you doing to further the instrument? And I want to hear all about that in the forums. If you're playing concerts, if you're playing new music, if you're involved in Zeltzman, I mean, you can get involved in the Zeltzman New Music project for 150 bucks, I think is what it is. And you can help ensure great intermediate works to be written. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate to be involved in that project and so many more. I'll be performing one of the premieres, I'm not sure which one, next summer at ZMF. And, um, you know, when you work so hard and you, you raise money and you work tirelessly performing concerts and getting music written by these composers, it's so amazing to see this type of exposure. So, question of the episode today, everyone, is simple. Tell me about something. Uh, you have done? Have you been involved in creating new music? I don't care what it is. I want to hear about it. Tell me how many concerts you've played. What have you done to further the role of the instrument? Because it's working, folks, and there is living proof right there. So until next time, thanks for listening.